Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Mr. Sunito. I've got another book for you today, but you know what I found when I was cleaning up my apartment? Look at this. I found a bell. Watch this. Boop. Yep. And since it's just me here, there's no students, uh, I can ring the bell all day. Ha ha ha. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna read you a book. And the book I've got for you today, it's another fable, and you've probably heard it before, but you might not have heard this version. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You ready? Let me switch cameras and let's get right to it. Hang on one second. Okay. Boys and girls, this book is called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It is retold and illustrated by Jan Brett. Remember, retold means that the author is telling an old story, but in a new way. Now, what do you know about the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Boys and girls, just think for a minute about what you already know about this story. And who do you think the characters are going to be? in this story. Hmm, look at the cover. There's some clues there. Well, let's read to find out more about these three bears and the girl named Goldilocks. Oh, wait. Did you see that? I just caught that. I wonder who that is. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, retold and illustrated by Jan Brett. Mmm, look at this picture. There's no real words here except for the dedication for Betty, Sally, and Joe, and for Miriam, but that doesn't tell us about the story. Yet when you look at this, the illustration gives you information about the setting. Where is this happening, do you think? Hmm. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived together in a house of their own in a wood. Oh, there's the house and they live in the woods. One of them was a little, small, wee bear, and one was a middle-sized bear, and the other was a great, huge bear. Ooh, look at these illustrations. There's so much to see. Take a minute and see if you notice everything in these illustrations. They each had a bowl for their porridge. Porridge is like oatmeal, maybe. So they each had a bowl for their porridge, a little bowl for the little, small, wee bear, a middle-sized bowl for the middle-sized bear, and a great, huge bowl for the great, huge bear. And they each had a chair to sit in, a little chair for the little, small, wee bear, a middle-sized chair, for the middle-sized bear, and a great huge chair for the great huge bear. And they each had a bed to sleep in. A little bed for the little small wee bear, a middle-sized bed for the middle-sized bear, and a great huge bed for the great huge bear. Wow, I love these illustrations. We've got the bowls, I see the beds. Of course, you've got the chairs. Hmm. One day, after they had made their porridge for breakfast and poured it into their porridge bowls, they walked out into the woods 
while the porridge was cooling. Now, remember, while the bear's porridge or hot cereal is cooling, they go for a walk. Where's Goldilocks on these pages? The small illustrations at the sides of some of the pages show what the other characters are doing at this time. Be sure to pay attention. And while they were walking, a little girl named Goldilocks came to their house. First, she looked in at the window. Then she peeped in at the keyhole. And seeing no one was at home, she lifted the latch on the door. Boys and girls, think for a minute. What's Goldilocks going to do? Hmm. The door opened before her, and she went, and in she went. How pleased Goldilocks was when she saw the steaming porridge on the table. The sweet smell of the porridge with roasted nuts, honey, and berries, filled the room. It was so tempting that Goldilocks set about helping herself. First, she tasted the porridge of the great huge bear, but it was too hot. Then she tasted the porridge of the middle-sized bear, but it was too cold. And then she tried the porridge of the little, small, wee bear, and it was neither too hot nor too cold. It was just right. She liked it so much that she ate it all up. Hmm. Now look at the illustrations at the sides of these pages to see what the bears are doing in the woods while Goldilocks is in their house tasting the porridge. There's the little bear. Look over there. Hmm. Then Goldilocks sat down in the chair of the great huge bear, but it was too hard for her. Then she sat down in the chair of the middle-sized bear, but it was too soft for her. There's the hard chair. There's the soft chair. Then she sat down in the chair of the little, small, wee bear, and this chair was neither too hard nor too soft, but just right. So Goldilocks seated herself in it, and there she sat, until the bottom of the chair gave way, and down she came, plump, upon the floor. Uh-oh. Then Goldilocks went upstairs to the bedroom in which the three bears slept. First, she lay down upon the bed of the great huge bear, but that was too high at the head for her. Next, she lay down upon the bed of the middle-sized bear, but that was too high at the foot for her. Then she lay down upon the bed of the little, small, wee bear, and that was neither too high at the head nor foot, but it was just right. So she covered herself up comfortably and fell fast asleep. Hmm. By this time, the three bears thought their porridge would be cool enough to eat, so they returned home for breakfast. Now Goldilocks had left the spoon of the great, huge bear standing in the porridge. See the spoon? 
Somebody has been at my porridge, said the great huge bear in his great rough, gruff voice. And look what Goldilocks is doing. And when the middle-sized bear looked at hers, she saw that the spoon was standing in it, too. Somebody has been at my porridge, said the middle-sized bear, in her middle-sized voice. Then the little, small, wee bear looked at his bowl, and the spoon was in the porridge bowl, but the porridge was all gone. Somebody has been at my porridge and has eaten it all up, said the little, small, wee bear in his little, small, wee voice. Oh, that was kind of fun. Hmm, let's practice saying somebody has been eating my porridge, just like the bears do. I think that would be fun. Let's practice. Let's do it like the big bear. Somebody has been at my porridge. And then the middle-sized bear, say it with me, somebody has been at my porridge. And then the wee-sized bear, somebody has been at my porridge. That's kind of fun. Uh-oh, look at these illustrations. Upon this, the three bears, seeing that someone had entered their house and eaten up little, small, wee bear's breakfast, began to look about them. Now Goldilocks had not put the hard cushion straight when she rose from the chair of the great, huge bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said the great, huge bear in his great, rough, gruff voice. And Goldilocks had crumpled the soft cushion of the middle-sized bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said the middle-sized bear in her middle-sized voice. And you know what Goldilocks had done to the third chair. Somebody has been sitting in my chair and has sat the bottom right out of it, said the little, small, wee bear in his little, small, wee voice. Ooh. They do not look happy. Then the bears thought it necessary that they should make a further search, so they went upstairs to their bedroom. Now Goldilocks had pulled the pillow of the great huge bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the great huge bear in his great, rough, gruff, voice? Goldilocks had pulled the cover of the middle-sized bear out of its place. Somebody has been lying in my bed, said the middle-sized bear in her middle-sized voice. And then the little, small, wee bear came to look at his bed. There was Goldilocks, sleeping peacefully, her long, shiny braid spread across the pillow. Little, small, wee bear just stared at her for a moment and didn't say anything. But then he cried, Somebody has been lying in my bed, and here she is! Boys and girls, are you wondering what will happen when Goldilocks wakes up? Goldilocks had heard in her sleep the great, rough, gruff voice of the great, huge bear and the middle voice of the middle-sized bear. But it was only as if she had heard someone speaking in a dream. But when she heard the little, small, wee voice of the little, small, wee bear, it was so sharp and so shrill and so like her own that it awakened her at once. Up she started, 
And when she saw the three bears on one side of the bed, she tumbled herself off the other and ran to the window. Out Goldilocks jumped and ran away as fast as she could run, not looking behind her until she was very far away. There she goes. And what happened to Goldilocks afterwards? No one can tell. But the three bears never saw anything more of her. Boys and girls, do you think Goldilocks will ever go back to the bear's house? Oof. I don't think so. Now, before we write, one more question. Could this story happen in real life? Could this really happen? What do you think? Is this going to be fiction? Or is it going to be nonfiction? Mm. Think about that. And then go get your writing materials. Pause the video, of course. And come on back. Let's get ready to write. All right, boys and girls, are you ready to write? Do you have your writer's notebook or a clean sheet of paper and a pencil, some crayons? Okay. Let's start by putting the title of the book at the top of your page. I've spelled it out for you right here, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And of course, put your name right next to it so I know it's you. Now what we're going to do today is kind of like what we did with some of our other books, is I've got some questions. I'm going to start the sentence. You're going to finish the sentence. Not too hard. So, if you're ready, let's do the first one. Here's the first question. It says, the setting is blank. So remember, the setting is where the story takes place. Mm. What do you think? Now, don't worry so much about the spelling of the words. Do your best. But I'm, I want to know if you can figure out the setting of this story. Pause the video and then come back when you're ready for question two. Here's question two. See if I can do this. Ha ha. Question two says the characters are. So you have to, again, copy the beginning of this sentence and then finish writing the sentence. If you've forgotten who the characters are, you might want to go back to the book and watch it again. But I bet if you think, you'll remember pretty quickly who the characters are in the book. So write your complete sentence. Don't forget, capital letter at the beginning, period at the end. Pause the video and come back, come back for question three. Here's question three. This sentence begins, the food she eats is blank. Pretty easy. One word but you have to write the whole sentence. Capital letter, period. I think you can handle that. And then I save the best question for last. Are you ready? The lesson she learns. What lesson did Goldilocks learn? What do you think Goldilocks learned in this story. Now, this is a trickier one. And you're going to have to think. Think back to the end of the story. What do you think her lesson is? Remember, start your sentence the way that I did. The lesson she learns is, and then you finish writing the sentence. So when you send me your writing in Class Dojo, I should see four sentences. They should begin 
like this, one, two, three, four. They should all start the way that my sentences start. And then you make sure that you answer the questions and get those periods at the end. I can't wait to see what you write. Send me your work in Class Dojo, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good day, boys and girls.